I'm very pleased to have an opportunity this morning uh, to provide a preview of a forthcoming report from OCLC research uh, that builds on the framework that Ricky has just been speaking of. When we drafted the original white paper on the evolving scholarly record and its implications for libraries, we earmarked as a particular concern the changing nature of library-based stewardship. Uh, as some of you will know, OCLC Research has a particular interest in understanding how traditional library operations are being reconfigured in the network environment. So for example, we've spent a lot of time looking at the shift from institution scale to group scale approaches to managing legacy print collections. We've devoted a lot of time and effort to thinking about how Research libraries are reconsidering their past patterns of investment in special collections in rare books and are turning attention to new kinds of uh, both efficiencies in cataloging those resources, but also uh, more attention to research support services. All of this is in aid of uh, improving our understanding of how libraries individually and collectively are changing uh, in response to the larger operating environment. Our work uh, looking at the evolving scholarly record takes a, a slightly different uh, approach, examining how changing scholarly practices are remodeling the stuff that research libraries, uh, particularly academic libraries, feel pr a particular responsibility to collect. I recently returned from a conference on the future of academic libraries in which a speaker used this model of scientific publishing to talk about uh, library engagement around support for researcher workflows. I have to say, I was, I was a little uh, surprised and even perhaps a little alarmed that a diagram describing publication uh, practices in the 1980s was being used to support a discussion of 21st century uh, library operations. But the more I looked at this diagram, and I appreciate that you can't uh, examine it closely at this uh, resolution, the more I looked at it, the more I appreciated how the library's claim to credibility as a partner in the research process was predicated on the assumption that the local university library collection was a reasonable surrogate for the universe of scholarly information. If you look at the scholarly communication vehicles and formats uh, that are listed around this cyclical research process documented here, you'll find that almost all of them, 80% or more based on what's represented here, uh, represent content that any university library in the 1980s would have held in its local collection. Library-based stewardship models ensured that a substantial share of scholarly communications was acquired and preserved for the future, and this therefore enabled the library to make reasonable claims that say, bibliographic instruction in how to do good search uh, was recognized as, uh, as a, a research support service in the 1980s. If we fast forward uh, 25 years on, we have a very different set of circumstances. I, I couldn't resist uh, repurposing this um, iconic image from a study at the University of Minnesota. Uh, for many years, as, as some of you will be aware, it was almost impossible to uh, attend an a, a academic library conference, at least in North America, that didn't feature some version of this, uh, of this image. One of the key motivations behind this uh, self-study that the University of Minnesota undertook to understand uh, the sufficiency of library-based supports for scholarship in the social sciences and humanities was a concern that the library was no longer in the picture of research support services for, uh, for some disciplines in particular. Uh, there was a particular concern that uh, the library didn't provide sufficient access to the publication platforms or the collaborative work environments that faculty and researchers needed to engage with the digital environment. This very interesting uh, project was one of the first highly publicized efforts to re-examine the library service bundle with respect to research support services and to question whether or not uh, current investments in university libraries were appropriately uh, distributed in, in order to support uh, changing scholarly communication flows. It's interesting to contrast that picture now 10 years old uh, with, with this very nice uh, uh, infographic that uh, makes a, an effort to array the amazing proliferation of research support, uh, workflow support tools that are available uh, today. This, this infographic is a part of a very nice uh, project at the University of Utrecht. 
uh, libraries that's looking to understand the full range of research support uh, services. Many of the tools that are featured here are provided by, by publishers uh, who market their services, innovative workflow support services, directly to the research community with a consequence that a substantial part of the documentation of scholarly work of scientific practice is now organized outside of the library. So this is really the nub of the problem that we explore in, uh, in our new white paper on stewardship of the evolving scholarly record. What does it mean for libraries to be continuing to make claims about stewardship in an environment where an increasing share of scholarly work is documented in environments outside of the, the control or in some cases even uh, deliberate interest of of academic libraries. We begin our new paper with a admittedly slightly uh, fanciful analogy uh, between the evolving scholarly record and economic activity in general. Both have moved to the network and are increasingly weightless. That is, they are literally less about the production and movement of physical goods and more about managing transactions on the web. Scholarly practices have moved to the web and so too have the outputs of scholarly work. In a fundamental way, the library as a repository of human knowledge has been decentered and dematerialized. This is about much more than the digitization of library print collections or the print to electronic transition in publishing. It's about the locus and nature of scholarly work. You're all now uh, familiar with this picture. It's the central framework of our original white paper in which, as uh, Ricky has explained, we examine the growing importance of, of uh, scholarly outputs around the process and aftermath of the traditional uh, scholarly publication. The proliferation of new publication venues surrounding the traditional scholarly output, the article or monograph, means that we have a much richer and more complete record of scholarly inquiry than was captured in the past. In our new paper, we examine some of the key characteristics of the evolving scholarly record as they relate to library-based stewardship activities. First, we say that there is rapid growth in the volume of content published in new digital platforms. We say this growth is both vertical, that is, there's a growing depth of uh, available documentation, and also horizontal. There's documentation of a broader range of scholarly work, research methodologies, cell lines, software code releases, etc. Secondly, there's an increase in uh, the diversity and complexity of outputs, uh, and uh, Ricky has spoken to some of this, the uh, dynamic nature of data sets, the kinds of work products that come out of collaborative authoring platforms. It's a kind of uh, version control gone mad. Finally, and most critically, for our understanding of impacts for libraries, there's growing distribution of custodial responsibility for different components of the scholarly record as it is parceled out across a range of new publishers and the kinds of expertise needed to preserve it uh, become more specialized. It's important, I think, to acknowledge uh, that we are not claiming that the scholarly record is coterminous with the universe of scholarly outputs. We're not claiming that all of the new stuff that is produced in networked scholarly activity is necessarily in scope for library uh, collection, selection, preservation, or stewardship. But we are claiming that a growing range of scholarly outputs exhibit some of the characteristics that do move them within range of interest for scholarly preservation. They are uh, equipped with identifiers, they are citable, they are cited, they are parked or docked in repositories that are exercising some gravitational pull in their own right. They're starting to take on some of the characteristics of, of something that will need to be uh, preserved for the long haul. Historically, library-based stewardship was largely an uncoordinated affair. Individual university libraries made local decisions about what to acquire, uh, and many other libraries made similar decisions, which resulted in uh, an inadvertent, uh, a not deliberate, uh, but still very useful redundancy in collections, uh, as well as around the margins, some interesting and useful complementarity. The collective library resource represented a sufficient part of the scholarly record, a representative microcosm of the larger ecosystem of scientific research. Uh, in our paper, we uh, compare this to the action of the invisible hand that uh, 
Adam Smith spoke of as governing economic markets, without any deliberate intent, libraries created an informal network that ensured the scholarly record was preserved. We contend that this traditional approach to library-based stewardship is no longer fit to purpose for the changing norms in scholarly communications, and that it represents, in fact, a risk to academic libraries in particular, as the scholarly record is imperfectly approximated in the aggregate library resource. This is because libraries are not deliberately or systematically acquiring the outputs associated with the process and aftermath of traditional scholarly publication and because the total scope of scholarly record now is such that even the collective investment, even the collective investment of academic libraries is insufficient to ensure its long-term preservation. Libraries therefore need to be much more conscious of their position in a much larger and uh, more complicated ecosystem. This leads us to conclude that new stewardship models will, requ will require what we call conscious coordination, that is, deliberate attention to the larger context in which they operate and new business roles focused on collaboration and increasing interdependence. This trend to increasingly conscious coordination is part of a larger change in the collections environment that we see reflected in the shift from institution scale to group scale operations. Thus, while in the past, libraries supplemented the local owned physical inventory through informal borrowing networks, through integration of licensed resources in the local discovery environment, they are now increasingly reliant on formal collaborative uh, arrangements for collection sharing, managing what we call now the facilitated collection uh, is much more reliant on conscious coordination. We identify uh, four key components of consciously coordinated stewardship uh, here, simplified a little bit with, these, uh, with this iconography. First, greater aware, uh, awareness of and attention to the larger system-wide context in which libraries operate. Second, increasingly formalized agreements around local and group uh, preservation commitments. Associated with this, we see more specialization and formal division of labor around stewardship of different parts of the scholarly record. And finally, we see uh, growing reliance on trusted networks of reciprocal access and preservation to ensure that the individual institutions continue to have access to a distributed and uh, parcelized, if you will, scholarly record. In our paper, we, we discuss specific examples of each of these. I will not describe them in detail here, but uh, just to touch on a few illustrations as evidence of growing attention to system-wide context, we point to the growing importance of collection analyses to support uh, local stewardship decisions as evidence of explicit commitments. We point to the emergence of new standards and registries uh, to record preservation agreements. Division of labor uh, is evident, we think, in institutional decisions to invest in specialized curatorial efforts around particular kinds of content, and equally in the emergence of specialized platforms dedicated uh, to providing repository services around different components of the scholarly record. And there is, I think, abundant evidence that libraries are ever more reliant on group scale preservation agreements, uh, including reciprocal access provisions. I want, in closing, to touch uh, very briefly on three key implications we think are especially important to stewardship of the evolving scholarly record. Uh, first is the question of scale, that is, the, the scale at which stewardship uh, is likely to be organized. Uh, to be clear, we, we do not dispute that institution scale stewardship will be uh, important to the academic and particularly the research library community. What we do believe is that that institution scale stewardship will be increasingly specialized and uh, that it will be organized in this larger context of collaborative arrangements. So there will be a lot of attention to the rescaling or the right scaling of stewardship activities. As part of this, we think that institutions will be much more attentive to the return on investment for group scale preservation. Overall, we think that university administrators and perhaps uh, even library administrators themselves will show a lower tolerance for remaining status quo investments in institution-scale collection management. 
We think there will be much greater attention to managing the transaction costs associated with above institution stewardship. This is because the stitching costs or the coordination costs of managing collaborative stewardship can become quite high. Uh, therefore, we anticipate uh, increased reliance on data-driven uh, automation of support around selection and collection analyses. We uh, anticipate greater attention to both the carrying capacity and the coordination capacity of groups, and in general, a move away from traditional cataloging workflows in favor of collection level metadata management practices. With the greater attention to performance metrics and data-driven decision support, we anticipate that formal handshake agreements around stewardship will progressively fall out of favor. Finally, we think that institutional brand will be a very important variable in consciously coordinated stewardship. As stewardship becomes more specialized, it will become even more important that local investments are aligned with larger institutional investments. It will become difficult to, to make a claim of stewardship around agricultural economics if your institutional brand is particle physics or even great books. Local investment will be deliberately redirected away from uh, commodity or core information uh, assets and toward distinctive institutional assets, including, as Ricky pointed out, uh, particularly the output of local faculty and researchers, a theme that we'll be exploring in more detail tomorrow. And uh, in keeping with the findings of a recent uh, ARL study, we believe that the reorganization of library stewardship will favor the development of new networks of excellence so that the costs and benefits of preserving the scholarly record are distributed across communities with shared interests and complementary capacities. Ultimately, we think that the emerging stewardship ecosystem will encourage a shift in the alignment of private and public incentives to preserve the scholarly record as universities, as well as research funders, recognize that scholarship and scientific progress rely on unencumbered access to an increasingly diverse and highly distributed body of work. Although stewardship is the primary focus of our new white paper, we acknowledge there are many other interesting and important uh, issues related to libraries and the evolving scholarly record, uh, certainly discovery of this uh, diversified uh, scholarly work, uh, issues around research assessment, reputation, and ranking. Some of that will be discussed tomorrow. Um, and uh, some of the changes in the knowledge work in metadata management and libraries. All of these are very important issues not directly touched upon in our uh, latest white paper. I hope that they'll be a feature of our discussions uh, today and indeed lead to some uh, further research work. We have uh, made uh, preprints, I believe, available uh, for, for this audience, for attendees at today's uh, workshop, and we look forward to formal publication of this report later this month. Um, I do want to uh, note special thanks on behalf of, of Brian Lavoie and myself to, to some people here in this room who uh, reviewed uh, drafts of this. Uh, Merrily Prophet and, and Ricky Irway have provided useful feedback, and Keith Webster as well has provided very useful feedback as we continue to think about stewardship and the evolving scholarly record. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Jim Malco.